Welcome back to part four of this module on error handling. In this part, we'll cover a related topic, enumerated types. Some pieces of data may have a limited number of possible values. For example, the days in the week, months in a year, or error codes all have a limited number of established values. In C, you can define what is called an enumerated type and create predefined human readable values for it. An enumeration is a complete ordered listing of all possible items in a collection. Here's an example in which we've defined an enumerated type for the days of the week, Sunday through Saturday. We use the keywords typedef, short for type definition, and enum, short for enumeration. We then use opening and closing curly brackets inside of which we provide a comma delimited list of possible values. At the end, we provide a name for the enumerated type, ending it with a semicolon. Also note the style elements of this declaration. Each value uses an upper underscore casing naming convention. For readability, we put one value per line. We've also used upper camel casing for the enumerated type's name. Finally, enumerated types are typically declared in a header file. Alternative syntax and styles are possible and commonplace, but this is the style we'll use. Once declared, you can use an enumerated type like any built-in variable type. Here I've declared a variable named today, and its type is the enumerated type that we've defined earlier. We can then use it like a normal variable and assign it a value in our enumerated type. Today is, say, Tuesday. We can also use the equality operators to test the value of a variable. Now, the way that C actually implements enumerated types is by using an integer value. By default, the list starts at zero. So in our example, Sunday would have a value of zero, Monday would have a value of one, etc. Saturday being the last value in our list would have a value of six. Because of this, you can perform integer arithmetic on enumerated types. For example, you can increment an enumerated type. The day after Friday is Saturday. However, if you increment it too much, you start to get invalid values. The day after Saturday is conceptually Sunday, but the today variable will now have a value of seven after line three, which is not a valid value in our list. You can also make the mistake of assigning an invalid value directly. Just because you can do these things doesn't mean that you should, so be careful. So why are we covering enumerated types in the context of error handling? It's because using enumerated types allows you to use human readable terms in your code. Without enumerated types, your error codes are nothing more than mysterious magic numbers. In one of our previous examples, I kept intentionally forgetting which number stood for which error type. Using enumerated types makes your code more readable and easily understood. You're not constantly looking back and forth at your documentation to know what the error code numbers stood for. They also provide a slight advantage over simple define macros as used in the standard error library. Enumerated types are understood by debuggers and naming conflicts are easily caught by the compiler. Let's demonstrate by defining and using an enumerated type for our error codes in our previous example. Here's our program from before. We'll focus on the compute line function. My first step is to define an enumerated type for errors. We previously identified three different types of errors. A null pointer error, we also had an invalid line error, where the points represented the same two coordinates, and a vertical line error. Now as is, these enumerated values will have values 0, 1, and 2 respectively, which kind of goes against our convention. Remember that 0 indicates no error. So let's add that. Now we can use this enumerated type in our source file. Instead of an integer, I'll return an error type. 
Instead of one, I'll return null pointer error. Instead of zero, we'll return the no error value. Now that we're using an enumerated type for our error codes, we can more easily implement error handling in our driver program. Now let's test this. and everything seems to work. We didn't change the functionality of our program, but we certainly made it more readable. Now there's no guesswork what those mysterious magic numbers represented. Instead, we have a human readable error code that we can understand.